Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Win in Crusade Kings 2. And like our Europe Universalis 4 Let's Play, we are playing as Tibet. Not quite, we're playing as a duke, or sorry, a king underneath the empire of Tibet. In the 769 start, Tibet had a huge empire that spanned the entire Tibetan plateau. Uh, historically, it lost its empire uh, a little bit afterwards. So we are playing in a time frame where the Tibetan Empire is still around and thanks to the game mechanics of Crusade Kings 2, big empire seem to last quite a while. As we can see, Holy Roman Empire is nearly completely shattered. They're fighting a bunch of revolts right now. And by a bunch of revolts, I just mean one revolt. We have Emperor Pepin the Tormentor of the Holy Roman Empire versus Elbert, Eckbert of the Holy Roman Revolt. Man, you don't sound as good. You have good commander traits though, and you're currently leading troops down in Lorraine over here? Yeah, where is the Kaiser? You're not even Kaiser, you're the Roman Emperor. You're up here in Brabant. Alright, let's take a quick look at the Emperor here. That is so weird. This emblem here, this symbol, is meant to be for the Empire of Francia, but it says it's the Holy Roman Empire, which is a little strange. I don't know what's going on there. Let's take a look. Holy Roman Empire, is there any that's part of the Empire of Francia? No, actually. There's meant to be a de jure area here on this map mode, on this map mode called Francia. There's also Germania as well. But when the Holy Roman Empire gets formed, it takes over the de jure categorization of any kingdoms of which it has land in. Uh, or which it has entirely, which is probably why Bavaria is considered de jure part of Germania. Is there anything else? Bohemia. So Germania includes only Bavaria and Bohemia. That is one small empire. I figured Carpathia would probably be the smallest empire. They also have two, uh, two kingdoms inside their de jure borders. But anyway, taking a look at the rest of the world, I wonder if the Byzantines are still ruled by that little girl. Uh, she is uh, the Empress, uh, that person, the monster of the Byzantine Empire. Oh my goodness. Take a look at these awful traits. She's zealous, which is not bad. She's Han? What? Why is she Han? Where did that come from? What? Greek, Han, Greek, Han, Han, Greek. Okay, there has to be... Yi, Hun, are you perhaps the tutor? I can't tell. Wow, the Byzantines have turned Han right now. I'm sure there can't be many people who are happy with the Byzantine Empire. No, take a look at this. All of these vassals are Greek, right? Uh, my cat is trying to get off my lap here. Alright, now I actually have room to move my legs without disturbing the cat. Uh, we have a bunch of Greek vassals here, and they all dislike... Okay, that's their opinion of me. The opinion of the liege is so far down. Wow, the liege is such a tyrant. Minus 230, what did you do? Of course, it's probably why you're called the monster. And your spouse died of camp fever. How many years ago was that? Uh, that was uh, four years ago. Alright. So the Byzantines seem to be doing... Uh, they seem to be a little bit unstable right now. Everyone really dislikes her. As you can tell on this map mode, which is the opinion map mode, I went ahead and clicked on the Basilius's sorry, the Basilissa, uh, her primary holding here, and it showed me the opinion of everyone in the world of her. As you can see, Byzantium is quite red. I think the only green here is herself. Yeah, take a look at that. Ein Tab, Empress Isara Theodokia, the monster, and same up here. And I think the same should be over here as well. Yeah, nobody really likes her at all. Not even us. We, uh, we're, we find her, we like her plus one. But that's if we even know about her, personally. I like to imagine 
that all of these opinion modifiers, see, take a look at this. I have an opinion of this small little county countess chiefess over here. I have an opinion of her. Uh, or she has an opinion of me, rather. I have an opinion of her as well, but it's a little bit more difficult to find. So why on earth does this lady over here know about me over here? I like to imagine it is as if they did know of each other, this is what their opinion would be, right? So if we did interact with Chitas Kathan of... not going to pronounce that. She would hate us by minus nine because we're an infidel and known murderer. But as of right now, there's no reason for that to happen. There's no interaction between us two. So I might as well uh, justify to myself that these people don't know who we are. Alright, Tibet is currently in revolt, and so are our vassals, actually. This... Mm, are they? You're... Oh, you've been imprisoned! Oh, this means that I can... Hmm, I need... Late feudal administration. Which means what? Now I have late feudal administration, why can't I implement it? Oh, because I can implement it. Fine, change it, cost 100 karma, I have 800, that's fine. Inheritance, we can do either primogenitor or ultimate genitor. Because of our religion, it doesn't really matter which one it is, because we can designate any valid offspring as heir. So since we are under agnatic cognatic gavel kind, that means that we can select any of our male children to inherit. Oh, we can even go ag absolute cognatic. Because we have... Oh, our culture allows us to. Wow, that's impressive. I did not anticipate that. That is sweet. What other cultures? You can do Basque. I know of the Basque culture. Sumpa. And you can either publicly follow Masalian, Mazdaki, or the Cathar religion. I didn't quite realize Masalian and Mazdaki allowed it to... Allowed absolute cognatic either. That is quite fortunate. Unfortunately, we can't... Uh, change two of our inheritance laws at the same time. We need to wait. Uh, let's see. Has not previously changed the succession law right there at the top. So if we change the succession, wow, the succession law here, we can't then change the gender law. So we're going to go do primogenitor. Although, who are you? You are. You're my firstborn son. All right. We're going to do primogenitor, make our firstborn son like us a little more, but all of our other children are going to hate us, because they're not firstborn. Even though it doesn't really matter in the end, they still get angry about it. So take a look at this. My son now likes me a little more. Outrage? What? No. You're not outraged by the succession law change. You actually benefit from it, my good son. Ah, uh, oh well. Alright, you're ugly. Let's take a look to see who is the worst of our children here. Male children, that is. Uh, we can't... We can assign Windud, our legitimized bastard here, as our heir. But I don't think we want to do that. I think that messes up with the dynasty a little bit. Uh, oh, you're actually pretty good. But you're chaste. You're married to... Aren't you the daughter of... You're the daughter of... This man over here. Oh, I married you because you're also quick. Alright. Let's see. You probably really hate me. Eh, you, eh, you're not that bad, actually. You hate me because I'm homosexual. I am your father. Anyway. Simon. Simon is outraged by the succession law change, of course. So, I think... Yeah, this dude looks like he's probably the best bet, but I ideally want somebody who can... He, oh, he also has land, that's right. He also has land over somewhere, does he? Yeah, he owned this land, so if we play as this man, we will gain all of his titles when we die, because he has his own titles, right? Although, he's tribal. That's a little bit of a problem. Where is his primary holding? Your primary holding is this one here. I'm going to spend some money to... Oh, I can't improve them. Darn. 
Alright, so it will be bad if we inherit this man, because he currently has the tribal government type, and if he gets... No, this shouldn't matter, should it? What's the culture here? The culture here is... Yeah, it's all of our territory, so it should, it should be fine, because our religion? Or is it our tribal? No, it's our monastic feudal, isn't it? Yeah, can hold tribal holdings without penalties for counties with your culture. So we're good on that. Alright. Uh, <laughs> Ten minutes in, halfway through the episode here, and I haven't even unpaused. This is CK2 for you. We do have an unlanded son. So we're gonna... How old are we? We're pretty wizened right now. We're 53 years old. Alright, let's unpause. It doesn't look like we have too many negative health traits. We only have stressed. It has come to my attention that the Grand Vizier of... Kargalik uh, has bribed and threatened his way through my domain, trying to get enough people to recognize a claim on my title that he has fabricated for his liege, Marzaban Sata. Marzaban Sata? Who are you? You live over here. I don't... I don't really care. I could just go by and attack you. Oh, I can actually raid, can't I? I can raid infidel neighbors for loot. We are Tibetan, though. Sorry, we're Buddhist, though. I'm, I'm not sure if we can raid them. Because they're also Buddhist, so they're not classed as infidels. We could probably raid down here, maybe? Yeah, you're a Hindu, so you're probably classed as... Hmm. What do we need? We need a county on the border of our realm here, of the Leisure's realm. Uh, my daughter, Kanasuri, has been clutching her stomach and she has dysentery. Call my court physician at once. Your determination and hard work paid off. Studying with Princess Gwilim, Gwilumo, you have uh, learned several new languages to a decent level of fluency. Excellent. Thank you, Gwilumo. Gwilumo, I think that is. Alright. So let's get our son, Prince Orwin, here a martial education. He actually has two green traits here. Green means that they get a better outcome from this learning. Red means they get a worse outcome. And there's a different combination. You can have like a red and a green, two reds and a green, or two greens and a red, or just three greens. I've never had three greens, mind you, but we're going to go martial because Orwin in D&D is a fighter. He's very much trained as a killing machine. Blessings upon you and your house. I'm aware of your involvement in Prince Pergyal Song Detson of Tibet's plot to kill Sempo Pergyal Sadn Legs of Tibet and feel it would be in your best interest to abandon that mad scheme. Our liege had realized that we're trying to kill him. We're backing the plot of this man here. He's basically doing what I did a few episodes ago. Yeah, 41%, huh? I, I'll accept. So I'm no longer backing that. Oh, let's go ahead and write another book while we can. We haven't got uninspired anymore, so we can definitely write another book. What is our next best trait? Family history, relationships, diplomacy or intrigue? No, those are our worst two stats. This is stewardship, which is alright. Or we can name it after my dynasty. I, you know what, I'll do it after my family history, of course. Even though I have no children here. Tax shifted burger obligations law? Sure, I don't really mind. That just means that the burgers... <laughs> I'm hungry now. The burgers pay more tax, which means us. Uh, castle holders, feudal holders. A travelling poet who called himself a bard arrived here today. I can gain plus two to my intrigue and minus five to temple vassal opinion. Let's do it. We want to try and attack for some more claims. Border dispute over there. Our dude is still working out over here. Let's let's go ahead and do a border dispute war over this man here. We can do it over this province here, which gives us a border with the Ayodhya. Oh, we can't. We need personal wealth of six. Sorry, four hundred. Oh, we're nearly there. Can we righteously imprison someone? We can righteously imprison you. So yeah, let's try to imprison his Raiders Flag and Rebellion. Alright, who am I at war against? Uh, some dude over here. You can tell by the red outline. So we're going to go ahead and raise our troops here. He only has... how many troops does he have? 
200 men, but because we're sitting here, he can't raise his men, which is some weird AI quirk that I've never experienced uh, as a player. You want me to kill my wife? Absolutely not! Why do you want me to kill my wife? She is the best person, in my opinion. Alright, we've captured him. I can attempt to banish him, but that won't work. I'm gonna instead go and ransom him for a little bit of money. Although, during the time that it took for that war to end, we actually have enough money now to declare our war down here. I think it costs... Yeah, we lose 400 gold and 300 karma. That's fine. Let's go for it. Yeah, let's do it. So we now declare the border dispute war against him, which basically means, hey, I'm disputing this border, please let me have your land. Well, with, just without the niceties to it. Recently I've noticed the pitiful state of my son, Prince Win Elland. I have been informed that the case, the cause of his aches and fatigue is the flu. Oh, well, Elland is not doing so hot right now. He got mild treatment and decent symptom treatment, which is good. We just ransomed that dude back to himself so he doesn't get... Oh, what's this? You want me to kill this man here? Because you are his heir. What te territory do you own? You own this territory down here. I think there's a trade post here. Yeah. So if you kill this man... You're going to gain more land down here. I'm going to decline this. He's actually an organizer. Organizer is a very good trait that I rarely see. We've engaged this army a little too early, but it's all good. Uh, Huatzel came about as a homosexual, lustful, proud, temperate lady. Alright, let's go ahead and get her married off to someone. We can marry her to the petty Shah of Zayetsu. I don't know where that is. I can't be bothered to take a look at it. Perang, we can marry it to our vassal. What this will do is it will prevent this vassal from entering into a... Hold on. Are you a faction member? You're not a faction member. Any faction members here? Yeah, we have my son and my near. Your wife is pregnant, but I can't... No, I can't make a non-aggression pact with you. Alright. Mm, it was Huazal here. Alright, let's instead just use this to try and breed more more traits into our family line. Imbecile, excellent. That's not imbecile, that's slow actually. Yeah, sweet. Alright, we've won this battle. We're gonna now march down to here and just take his one holding. I believe he has more than one holding. Yes, he does. So once we siege this... We won't win the war outright. I received a letter from my fellow member of the Savaka Sagna. Dear Brother Dud, will you, as the Eastern Scholar you are, please offer me advice on my poetry? Sure, let's do that. Alright, so I need to pacify these, uh, these factions here. So let's get... I've already given gift to you guys, really? No, that can't be right. You want to fabricate a claim on my kingdom, huh? Alright. This is a, a trick that I like to do when it comes to... Alright, you end... Stop backing this plot. As you know, having... Asking people to leave a faction increases their opinion of you temporarily. So you see, 20... Oh, okay. Just 20? Declared unjust... Oh, that's why the faction is going up, because we declared an unjust war. Alright, that's something I should pay attention to next time. If we die now, a lot of our vassals are going to hate our newborn, or our new ruler. Although it's only really just this dude who absolutely hates us. But he is a vassal beneath a vassal. And this vassal is a powerful vassal. So let's get him on the council here. And have him start fabricating a claim on Purang here. Alright, anyone else a powerful vassal that wants a seat on the council? You do. You're a good steward. But we're not going to put you on the stewardship role right now. 
what we are going to do is we're going to go collect taxes in our capital that increases this value and this value. As you can see, the, the temple gives us more tax. Uh, Abdeel didn't react well to my way of correcting him. I fear he is even more suspicious towards me now. Alright, good. So let's take a look. Current base tax 6.2, and that's with a castle town. Down here we have just the church town, and the base tax is 10. So if we have more temple holdings, we'll get more money. Did we set... We should set one of these as our crown focus. This one here looked like a pretty large county. I'm going to set my crown focus for here for now. Uh, I lose tra I lose greedy. Oh, that's a shame. I, I'm setting crown focus here to get prosperity events. The more prosperity events we have, the more opportunities we get to add another holding slot over here. And that is uh, pretty important. Alright, we've won this war. Let's enforce our demands. And now we have this province here. Let's take a look at the... This is actually upgraded by a decent amount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give Sir Pennington here some land. I'm going to grant him the land that we have just taken over here. Excellent. Alright, who is our current heir? Our current heir is this dude. 17911614 versus Sir Pennington 1610811. We're going to go ahead and designate Pennington as our heir now. Sweet. He wants to become a counsellor. He's got 12, 11, and 13. 12, 11. Yeah, I think Pennington should be... Although this guy is a lot better, hilariously enough, at spy mastering. But he is slow. Oh, that is hilarious. Oh, he's also my grandson, of course. Alright, excellent. This is what I like to see. Demand religious conversion. Please become my religion. And you should like me a decent amount now. Uh, there are so many people out to get me. Their eyes are staring at me constantly. I am sure they are plotting against me in open sight. Ooh, avoid open spaces. They are dangerous. Alright. So, Sidbo Win has revoked the city of Nyimya from the person who owned the city of Nyimya before. This guy, Glow Thonmi has dragged his unfaithful spouse, Princess Wynne Huatzel, before me and insists that I should punish her. You are asking me to punish my own daughter. This is a waste of my time. Go away, I do not believe you at all. My daughter would do no such thing. Let's go ahead and go for a hunt. The world is a dangerous place and devious plots are everywhere. Rumours have reached you that people are conspiring to kill my wife. Alright, let's take a look at this. So you are my grandson, you want to kill your grandmother, so stop backing this dude's plot to kill her. And my son, I want you to stop backing the same plot. My near, I thought I told you to stop backing this plot, but apparently you're still backing it. Alright, anyone else? Nah. I'm gonna leave this guy, I'm gonna enable this guy to do this plot here. Uh, who are you? You are my Luchen. Lunchen. You're my... Diplomat. He wants me to go out carousing, so let's do that. My mercy. Our legendary. I accept your demand. Excellent. He loves me now. Rabbit after rabbit was caught, I killed and bought to me my new bird. I like this. We gain plus one diplomacy. My son, Pennington, now likes me a little more. Let's go ahead and send him an honorary gift. And also ask to change his religion. You like me a little bit more. I think... Did I send you a gift? No, I haven't sent you a gift yet. Let's send you a small gift. Alright, and Pennington agreed to change to the Buddhist faith. Excellent. We have one child here who needs learning. Which is... This is my bastard. Prince Dud. And you are her Win Dud as well. You're gonna go ahead and just struggle. Alright. For that, I think we're gonna end the episode here. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and if you have, uh, I hope to see you in the next one, so take care.